Upon mentioning the Forbidden City in Beijing, what will first come into your mind? The majestic three major halls, red palaces walls, golden glazed roof tiles? Those mysterious secret stories happen inside the palace, or popular legendary tales. Undoubtedly, the Forbidden City as the imperial palace of a royal family in Ming and Qing dynasties has witnessed the historic vicissitudes and changes of emperors. Until now, each tile and every plant of the existing Forbidden City seem to be telling a 600-year-long story of the Imperial City. In the 18th year of Emperor Yongle's reign, the new empire with Emperor Zhu Di at the center is ready to forge ahead into an ambitious future. And the Forbidden City was built under such circumstances to have nationwide effort and countless technicians continuously working for 14 years. The Forbidden City at the top of all architecture in China was having 24 consecutive emperors living, working, and exercising supreme state power inside. Chinese ancient people have always been favoring Feng Shui philosophy, and the royal family is in particular believing in it. Feng Shui is one of the deepest and most profound studies of ancient Chinese history, a comprehensive study involving yin and yang, five elements, eight diagrams and book of changes, astronomy, and many other concepts and thoughts. The Forbidden City was called Zijing City in Chinese language. What does Zijing exactly mean? In the past, the Chinese people had always been playing great attachment to the planning concept that man is an integral part of nature. God is living inside a Zui palace in the heaven, and the Son of Heaven shall be accordingly living inside a Zui, Ziyuan palace in the earth. Therefore, names such as Zui, Ziyuan became nicknames of emperor's residences. We have to admit that Chinese Asian people's packaging concept is even more noble and magnificent than that of today. In terms of a meridian gate, ancient Chinese people held the belief that the greatest location in the world is to sit in the north and face to the south. Therefore, meridian gate facing the south became the front gate of the Forbidden City. Meridian gate has three door openings. Five small towers are standing on a huge and high brick stone platform, having nine rooms inside. Such designs also a symbolic sign of supreme royal power. After passing through Meridian Gate, you will see Golden Water River. Coming from northwest corner of the Forbidden City, passing through the Hall of Supreme Harmony, dividing the square in front of Hall of Supreme Harmony into two sections. The river helps to form an auspicious environment to have mountains in the back and water in the front. Based on theory of five elements, Gold gives birth to water, therefore, the river is called Golden Water River. As we all know, architectures in the Forbidden City can be categorized into Inner Court and Outer Court. Outer Court is having Hall of Supreme Harmony, Hall of Central Harmony, and Hall of Preserving Harmony in its center. And three halls are generally called Three Front Halls and are places to hold important state events. Inner Court is having Palace of Heavenly Purity, Hall of Union, Palace of Earthly Tranquility in its center and are called three back palaces, used as a living quarter of emperors and empresses. Such design layout not only meets the living needs, but also adhere to the conceptual principle of yin and yang. Ancient Chinese people believed that anything in the world can be categorized into yin and yang. Man is listed in yang elements, while woman is listed in yin elements. Anything in the front is listed in yang elements, and anything in the back is listed in yin elements, etc. Speaking of three major halls, Hall of Supreme Harmony shall be a typical example to have an architecture sitting on a protruding shape of three-level white marble foundation. Such foundation not only increased the height of three major palaces, but also shows the value of China's traditional culture. Two means soil in Chinese language is in the middle of five elements. Therefore, designers of the Forbidden City has placed the most important architecture on a two-shaped platform made by white marble. Of course, what we have seen here may be only a small part of the story. The Forbidden City is too inclusive to involve history, culture, architecture, art, and many other forms inside. What we can do right now is only to constantly explore its stories behind, for more people to understand the Forbidden City and China's glorious historical civilization.